In the midst of this pandemic, price gouging and scams are on the rise and a whole new set of regulations barring evictions are also in place. Earlier this morning, we talked with Minnesota Attorney General Keith Ellison. And joining us right now is Minnesota's Attorney General Keith Ellison. Keith Ellison, thank you so much for joining us. Well, glad to be here, Esme. Thank you. There are so many issues to talk about, but I do want to ask you something personal. I want to express my condolences for the loss of your mother who passed away right. in Detroit. And you, like so many other people, have had to deal with your grief and planning a funeral in a very difficult way. Just, just tell us a little bit about that. Well, you know, my mother was a beloved person. She was a devout Catholic. She was a Jesu parish. She was there two, three times a week, youth person, you know, all that. And uh, she wasn't able to have a Catholic funeral because um, the archdiocese said no priest can do any, any, any funeral services. So we had basically her ceremony in the, in the uh, funeral home. And then even when we brought her to the burial site, only three people could be at her actual internment. And I got four brothers and there's five of us. So um, we had to pick between each other who could be there when they lowered mom into the ground. And so for two of us, me and my older brother, it was kind of like, you guys, you know, we'll, we'll let y'all do it. We believe you can represent us. And, but it was tough, you know, because we all wanted to be there. And I guess, you know, it's, it's, I really grieve for people who can't do for their loved ones what they really want to do at a moment like this. We've been through it and it's not easy. Okay, well, I am so sorry, and I'm so sorry that you had to go through this. And I know that so many other people are, are going through the exact same thing, but uh, our condolences. Well, Esme, if I may say so, my mother taught us to be, to be strong, to, to get the work done. She taught us all that we needed to know to get us through this moment. So she's still blessing us. So that's it. All right. Well, listen, I know, and your work continues. There are so many issues here that we want to ask you about. First of all, rent and mortgage. They can't kick you out of your right. home. But what happens when this ends and people have these mega bills to, to produce? That's an excellent question. I can tell you that there are a number of activists and uh, housing um, uh, folks who are working on this right now. They're making proposals and we're sorting through them. But we recognize this is a very serious issue. And of course, you know, it's, it's, it's about the tenants uh, and amassing these bills when they're unemployed. But it's also uh, a lot of small landlords in particular, they depend upon the rents to be able to pay their own mortgage. So that's, so that's tough. So, I mean, we need a comprehensive solution that will allow the tenant to be able to stay in their home and not get evicted, even at the end of this crisis, and allow the landlord to may owe mortgage to not uh, go into foreclosure. It is a it is a process that needs to be thought through, but we recognize the urgency and the seriousness that we're working with advocates to deal with this. We want to quickly get to um, scams. We're all out of sorts here. A lot of a lot of people are applying for you know unemployment, and they might expect a call from a government agency. What should people know about giving out their information and who might be calling and who wouldn't be calling? Do not give out your information to somebody who just calls you cold out of the blue. You're not expecting their call. Even, so, even if it's the unemployment office and you f file for unemployment? Well, see, in that case, you might expect them to call, right? Because you file for unemployment. And then, you know, you can, they, they should know some things about your, your application. But if somebody just cold calls you out of the blue and like, hey, I'm from the unemployment wall. Who are you? What are you doing? Thank you. I'll call back at the general number. Don't do that call. Don't do that call if somebody calls you and says, "Hey, your stimulus check from the uh, from the uh, you know the congressional action uh, here. I'm here. You can I can help you get that. Just give me your information." No, don't do that. The information will be coming, but do not just respond to those cold calls. And we're going to give out your phone numbers for price gouging, but right. uh, this is something that you will take action on. Uh, price Absolutely. gouging. Well, we've taken action on some of the housing stuff. There was a landlord in Sandstone, Minnesota, who's, who tried to kick. He said, look, I know I can't officially kick you out through the courts, but I'm going to make it hard for you, and I'm going to shut off utilities. And, I'm a, and, and we went after them, and we will continue to go after people who do things like that. It's not lawful. It's illegal, and we're going to hold people accountable. But on the issue of price gouging, 
we've now received north of 900 citizen complaints. So as people are concerned about the attorney general's office, really you should be concerned about your customers who you're trying to take advantage of. They're the ones telling on you and we're encouraging them to do it because it's not right to try to profit off of a pandemic. Uh, Mr. Attorney General, thank you so much for your time. Uh, our condolences again for your mother's uh, thank you. passing. And we certainly appreciate all that you're doing. Thank you, Esme. We'll talk to you soon. Absolutely. And if you have any issues with price gouging or a possible scam, here are the phone numbers to the Minnesota Attorney General's Office, 651-296-3353 or 1-800-657-3787.